another wine bottle that we're gonna use and I have painted my canvas. I painted the entire canvas white, then I came back in with a little bit of the folk art rusted pipe and just giving myself a little bit of a place to put my bottle because you don't want it floating in the air. We are going to be placing our bottle on our faux table. Can you even see the bottom of that? We're gonna be placing our bottle down here into this zone so that it's not just floating in air. So, uh, but before we do that, I have a little decal stencil that uh, my customer wanted me to add. And uh, so we're gonna do that first, but I wanna place my bottle here so that I know where to put my words. Now what we're, this is like one of those decal stencils and it says carpe, or let me do it right. Carpe, is that backwards? Is that backwards? Hang on. Carpe? Vino. <laughs> is that not cute? So this is one of those um, vinyl stencils. So we are going to apply the vinyl stencil and then we're gonna stencil in Carpe Vino. And it's just a, something a little different than um, first time work. Yes, Agnes, it certainly is. Because these were uh, given to me by someone and I'm excited about using it. Get in the shop and see what I can define. Yes, Richard. Go Richard, go Richard, go Richard. Yes, we would appreciate you. So we are going to apply Carpe Vino for my little customer. And so here's what we're gonna do. This is like a vinyl stencil. It's one of those you can cut on your Cricut or whatever. It has a paper back, a plastic front, and then the stencil is sandwiched in the middle. So the first thing you have to do with one of these is use some sort of tool to press and kind of burnish down because you want your piece to stick to the back because we're gonna peel the backer off. We're gonna peel that off. There's glass under there for some reason. And, we're gonna and then we're gonna place it onto our canvas and then stencil through. Just something a little different for you guys. Normally I would probably, hey Inga. Normally I would probably just uh, do this by hand, but she actually had this uh, cut out for me. So I thought, well, I might as well use it. So we're gonna do that. So I'm gonna leave my bottle here for now so that I know exactly where I want to put my words. And I've burnished it. I already did that kind of before we got started. And somebody answer Deborah for me, please. And so I am gonna peel off the back because that's where you start. You peel off the paper backing if you don't have like fake nasty fingernails. Let me see if I could get in. I should have started that before. Ugh. Hang on, be patient with me, folks. There we go. So the first thing you do is peel off that paper backing, okay? So there is Carpe. So we are gonna place it where we want it and make sure, I gotta stand up so that I can make sure it's straight. So we're gonna place that and I'm gonna press down. I don't use these very much, but I definitely wanted to show you what is possible. Okay, so after I have it pressed down really nicely, we're gonna peel off that top layer of plastic and we're gonna leave the little stencily part behind. See, this is more trouble to me than just hand painting it. But, you know, people want to know. Ugh. Hang on. Give me a sec. Let me, let me burnish that down a little. 
Okay, so we peel off the back, press it down, and then we peel off the front carefully. This is not very, let me move this bottle before I break it. We'll peel off the front. And then it's kind of a one-time use little stencil. Ah, me no likey. Hang on. Yeah, it is those, it is kind of like the stickers that they use to vinyl your car. So let me see. I'm trying to get it off without making a disaster. See, these are not terribly user friendly, in my opinion. <laughs> That's why I just hand letter. But some people struggle with that. So, yeah, this is an option for somebody who struggles. You can get these things cut. Um, people on Etsy cut these all the time. You can get a Cricut. Ugh, no. That would have been nice too, but I gotta do what the people wants me to do. Customers dictate. So I'm just trying to peel off this Piece. And you kind of got to go slow so you don't peel up like the center of the pea is floating So you don't want to peel that up with your with your um, Peeling off the top layer. So you got to go really slow. Yeah, this is a struggle for me And remember when I was telling you a minute ago about how impatient I was with cut and glass bottles Oh girls that and boys <laughs> This is even worse. Okay? So this would make me crazy if I had to do this all the time. But yeah, if you can't letter pretty, then making these silhouette shapes or these cricket shapes works really nicely. So I'm just gonna use my little tool. And this is just a burnishing tool uh, to just make sure that's pressed down really nicely into my canvas, okay? So now we gotta do another one. <laughs> Now we gotta do this one. So I'm gonna put my bottle back so I know exactly where I want Vino to be. I'm gonna go ahead and peel off that back. Lower it. I thought this was gonna be a quick live. This uh, stencily business is for the birds. Okay, so we peel off the paper back. Hang on, be patient. Just laying around, Agnes. <laughs> so now we're going to place this right here. I really want, I don't know about those dots. I'm going to move this over and, and ignore the dots because I don't like them. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to use my tool. Yeah, I don't, I, I had, you know. We'll see. I'm, if I have to make it over, I'll make it over. So now we're going to peel off that top slowly, carefully. I'm going to need some more wine after this. This is stressing me out. Law. No, they don't, Tammy. I mean, I've used them before, and you know, in my prior life as a decorative artist, we uh, used. Um, a version of these. They're called Modellos and um, Melanie Royals from, from Royal Design Studios sells like huge, massive, this is going to make me mad, huge, massive stencils like this. Um, but these are pretty, this one feels like it's old. I don't know what the deal is. So I'm trying to get the, the uh, top thing off. Did anybody who's on here now see the di last disaster live I had? I don't know, I guess it's been a year ago when I was trying to do a transfer <laughs> and I couldn't, I know, okay, hang on. It's time. 
I should have put this crap on before I started. And it's these fingernails too. These old fakey gel fingernails are gonna be the death of me. I gotta get this crap off my fingers tomorrow or I'm gonna lose my mind. Hey, 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 I did it. I got it, I got it, I got it. I know it's not supposed to be that hard, is it? Oh, <laughs> you saw that video? Yes, I know, that was a, <laughs> that was a hoot. That was a disaster and of epic, epic proportions. <laughs> that was so funny. It was like funny, not funny. You know what I mean? Because I was doing a transfer, one of those new, I can't remember the company who does them, <laughs> but they're like uh, that company who makes those beautiful designs that you can just like, it's like when you were a kid and you had that tattoo, you could just scratch it onto your body. It's kind of like that. And I could not get that thing to transfer to my piece of furniture to save my ever loving life. I promise. It was so funny. It was like the worst live ever, but it probably had more views than any live I've ever done. Yeah, I am trying to peel. Ah! I'm just, I'm just impatient now. Voila! Lord have mercy. Okay, now I got some, I got to clean up my, where my ring was scratching into the paint. How crazy is that? Okay. Well, that took way too long. <laughs> Did you love that video? Oh my God. Yes, Carolyn, it was because I had sealed it with a wax sealer that somebody had given me to try out. And then I was trying to put the, um, the transfer on top of the wax so it just wouldn't stick. So I had to sand it down a little bit and then seal it with a dead flat varnish and that's how I got it to stick. But it was like, it was like, oh my Jesus. <coughs> okay, so our bottle is gonna go, I know that took long enough, didn't it? Our bottle is gonna go here and we're gonna put Carpe Vino and then we're gonna have a cork, and then we're gonna put some glass at the bottom. But before we do anything else, we're gonna finish up the stencil -y thing. And here's what we're gonna do. I am gonna use a little lamp black, which is um, Americana lamp black. I'm gonna put just a small amount on my palette here. And, I'm rolling all over the place. I have a stencil brush that I'm going to use. I also bought this from uh, Royal Design Studio, but you can get one. These are sold at, um, you know, all the craft stores. Just get you a nice one. The more expensive they are, the longer they last and the better they are. If you get a really cheap one, you're probably going to be sorry. So try to get the, the um, best one that you can get within your budget. Okay, so I am going to just stencil onto my canvas. But here's what you wanna make sure you do. I am a crazy pants, so I am going to just put a little tape around the outside edge of my stencil so that I don't get lamp black anywhere I don't want it, okay? Because I got a little bit of canvas exposed in some of these areas. So I wanna make sure I don't get black on any of that. So I'm just gonna give myself a little insurance. Yeah, and I don't want those dots showing either. So let's cover those. So this tape is an insurance policy. Well, worth its weight in gold. So let's do that. You just want to make sure your letters are still exposed. We'll do here. And then I need to cover up that little piece there. So we're going to have to do a little finagling. So I just tore myself a little strip and we'll put it right there. Okay. So 
Can you see that? I know it's hard to see because of the nature of what we're doing, but give me a sec and then you'll be able to tell. So I have a little bit of black on my palette. I'm just gonna spread it out a little bit because I don't want it to blob on to my brush. So I'm gonna spread it around. This is an eight by 16. So I'm gonna use my stencil brush. And normally I would put a little extender in here, but I don't wanna do that because I don't want it to take a long time to dry. So I'm just gonna lightly dip and you see how much paint is on there? Hardly any. Just dip in to my paint. Then I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna offload. See how much paint was on my stencil? You do not want that much paint. If you have that much paint on your brush, it's gonna seep up under that vinyl and then you're gonna have a nasty mess, okay? So we're gonna offload until it looks like there's no paint anymore. So you see the difference? See how much paint there is? And then there's a little less, and now it looks like there's not hardly any paint at all. Watch what happens. So I'm gonna take my brush, and I'm gonna come over here. And now you can start to see the letters. So I'm gonna put one quick layer, and then we're gonna do it again. until We're gonna build up a little bit of color. So a little bit of paint, we're gonna offload, then we're gonna come back in and add color. Little bits at a time so that you don't end up with too much paint, whoa, like that, on your canvas. You don't want it to seep up under, that is the main thing. Okay, so that is just solid lamp black. Now what I'm gonna do is take a little bit of this gray storm made by Americana. I'm gonna put a little bit of it on my canvas and we're gonna do a little bit of the same thing just so it's not a solid black print. So we're gonna mix that up. I'm gonna dip my brush in. Got brush on or paint on my brush. I'm gonna come over here I'm gonna offload a lot of that paint until it looks like I don't hardly have any more. Then we're gonna come in and just add, I mean, a little bit more. A little bit of gray randomly. Now let's see what we did. Hang on, let me do one more. Fill in a little, oh, that was excessive. Okay, I think we're done. <laughs> and put this, this stencil brush probably costs 20 bucks, so I'm putting it in water right away because I do not want my brush to get icky. So now we can just pull this up. So I'm just gonna pull it off. I'm gonna give it a little blow. <sighs> so I'm gonna pull it up. See, I had a little bit right there where I didn't have a tape. And I can see right now where that was, right, right there. That's me being a crazy pants person. And I'm gonna take my little uh, stylus. I'm gonna pull up that other piece of vinyl. So, and I do actually have a picking tool that I could use, but it's not handy. So I'm just gonna use this, and then I'll repair that real quick too. This manicure's got to go. Okay, so now it's set. Oh, no it don't, not yet, hang on. Patience, patience grasshopper, patience. Look at my girls up in the house. Look at me, Kara, love you Chica. Sarah, Brandy, hey Elaine, what you girls doing? Cheers, Carpe Vino. Okay, so I have a little boo-boo there and we don't want that because I don't think my client is gonna appreciate it. So I am going to give it a quick repair. <laughs> That's what happens when you drink wine 
while you're painting. And I'm just gonna use my stylus because it's got a tiny little point. And I'm just gonna cover up that little boo-boo. Can't even tell it was there. That's me just being impatient and getting in too big of a hurry. Voila. Hey Maureen, how are you girlfriend? So now, see this is why I was telling you earlier that I would just as soon uh, hand paint this. I would just as soon tra either trace it out or hand paint it uh, because that took way longer than anything should. And so, you know, and it, does, and it doesn't help that you're doing it in front of 100 people. So, you know, there's that. So here's what we're gonna do. We have our half cut bottle that is gonna go right here. And hang on. I got a little bit of paint. This is a client piece or I wouldn't worry too much about it. I got some black paint over here micromanaging it a little bit okay so our bottle is gonna go here this is a half cut bottle really really cute <laughs> carpe that's right and we are gonna actually add a where'd my cork go we're gonna add a cork and I've cut this cork in half so all I did was soak the cork in water for almost a full day so I just put it in a cup Put water in the cup and then put another cup inside it to force it down in the water so that it really got saturated and then yes my lettering cheat is way better that took way more time and it just irritated the crap out of me <laughs> and then I just used a box knife to slice that in half so it was easy 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 so we're gonna put the little wine cork here our bottle here and then we're gonna add just some clear classic glass Okay, so here's what's gonna happen. I'm gonna go ahead and glue my little cork where I want it to be, and I'm gonna add my glass, but then I'm gonna pull this up, and I'm gonna uh, put resin on the entire piece, lay this back down so that there's resin underneath the bottle, and, that's, and so that it sticks down, the bottle actually sticks to the canvas, then I'll come back and put resin over the top of the uh, bottle itself. So we're gonna go ahead and decide how much glass and where. So I'm just gonna go ahead and add that and then we'll pick up the bottle. So this is just clear classic glass, just a teeny bit. And then we're going to put, a, I'm going to use this Aileen's clear glue and ooh, just add, I see I didn't have my glue upside down, did I? I'm going to add a little bit of glue, put that kind of where I want it, maybe like right there. Put the top back on and now we're gonna go ahead and move this bottle off, okay? I want the glass to stay where it is. I'm just gonna slide the bottle off. And we're gonna mix some resin, and I'm gonna resin it just like it is, and then I'll put the bottle back. Can you put bubbles? Come, yes! I'm not gonna do it on this one because it is for a client. And, you know, she was very specific about what she wanted, but you could totally do that. Absolutely. So I'm just going to move this over for one second, and we are going to go ahead and mix some resin. Let me get some gloves. So I got some gloves. Judy, you're so sweet. You just say that because you love me. So I'm gonna get my gloves on and we're gonna pour, I'm gonna pour uh, two ounces. I feel really good that two ounces is plenty. So keep your fingers crossed that I'm right. Because we don't really have a lot of glass. The most we're gonna use is pouring the glass over the top of the bottle, but it's just gonna kind of roll down the side. So I think we'll be okay. So, cup. I'm gonna use a one cup 
method because I have lots of experience pouring resin. If you do not, I, oh yes, thank you for reminding me, Janie. If you are not an experienced resin pourer, I would suggest using a two cup method all day long, okay? Red glass under the body, yes! Yeah, and what you could do actually, if you wanted to, is just take some red paint, some maroon paint, and paint, and just paint the bottle. Just paint the inside of the bottle up to a point, and that would be awesome pants. Awesome sauce, awesome pants, whatever. Yeah, or the canvas. Probably easier just to paint the bottle. Yeah, my wood blocks are right here. I'm, oh, I'm ready for them, but I'm gonna mix my resin real quick first. So we're gonna do one ounce of art resin hardener. And uh, this is the resin I always use. It is non-hazmat, non-VOC, no BPAs. It is the best resin on the market, in my opinion. It's all I use, just so you know. I've been using it for about five years, and I would not use anything else. I would not trust any other resin with my art and my customers. So I'm going to pour an ounce of resin, and this bottle is almost empty. I got a lot of empty bottles laying around the studio, but I think I can get an ounce out of this. <whistles> Whistle while you work. Who's ready for Christmas? Please don't say you are not remotely. Okay, there's an ounce of resin. So now we're gonna get the hardener. It's a separate bottle. It's a 50-50 mix. So we're doing 50% resin, 50% hay V, 50% um, what am I trying to say? 50% resin, 50% hardener. So we have one ounce of resin, one ounce of hardener. So if you are, I can't say this enough, if you are inexperienced, you want to use two cups. Put an ounce in one cup, an ounce in the other. Whoop, 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 whoop. That way you have a precise measurement because if the measurement is off too much, you're gonna have an ooey gooey mess that will never ever dry. So I have two ounces of resin in my cup and so now we are going to mix. So here's what I'm gonna do. Yeah, Christmas can wait, can it? I am gonna raise up and I'm gonna be upside down, so be warned. Oh, no way, she's standing on her head. <laughs> okay, I might have had too much wine already. Let's see, there we go. I've had one cup, well, I've had a whole cup almost. So we're gonna mix for three minutes. Let me turn that down. We're gonna mix our resin for three minutes, and I wanna tell you this. You don't wanna whip it. You don't wanna be like, mix, 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 mix. Thank you, Cindy, I'm starting right now. You don't wanna mix it too fast, because the faster you stir, the more bubbles you incorporate into your resin, and then you're gonna have a hard time fighting that fight. There's always gonna be bubbles, because it's just the nature of the beast when you're stirring something. It's gonna always incorporate bubbles, but if you really, really whip it and stir it really hard and fast, you're gonna have more bubbles than you can deal with. So go slow, stir, scrape the sides, and do it for three minutes. Don't do it for less. You can do it a little more, it won't hurt, but do not do it for less, okay? So we're gonna stir, and while we're stirring for three minutes, if anybody has a question about the shattered circle, I am all ears. So we opened the Shattered Circle yesterday. The Shattered Circle is my membership community where I teach these types of projects all month, every, well not all month, but I teach it every month. We have two tutorials each month inside the Shattered Circle. We have our own private Facebook page. We have Q&A. 
We have potluck, we have contests, we have a lot of fun. And let me just tell you about, no, it isn't trash. If, you get, if you're a little off and there are one or two spots, what you need to do is, yeah, I like my resin gently stirred too. What you can do is dig out, just use a popsicle stick or something and dig out any uh, uncured uh, sticky stuff and then just re-pour it. It'll help all that settle down and cure. I've done it before. I had, uh, I did my son's countertops and there was one spot in the little bar top that was still sticky and we just scraped out all the sticky and re-poured it and it's just as good as new three years later. So it's not a total loss. There are things you can do to fix it. I, I do both. Uh, Rhonda, we do, the first video we do every month is always gonna be a glass art video, but uh, we do a secondary video every month too and sometimes it is a glass art piece, sometimes it's stenciling, sometimes it's just acrylic painting, sometimes it is a piece of furniture, but we're always doing something creative and always doing something that you can also incorporate into your art. So there's that. So uh, if you would like, can somebody, Agnes, will you do me a fave, sister? Will you post, uh, the shattered circle.com www dot the shattered circle.com is our membership website you can go there tonight and check out all the things that we offer inside our website uh, we are only going to be open until Friday at midnight and then we're closing down thank you Cynthia then we're closing down and we're gonna uh, I love on all our people that are inside our group because that's how our group is. Having trouble go out, come back in. Yes. Um, so uh, our group is like having a hundred best friends who are encouraging you. They are loving on you. They're cheering for you. They're helping you. Thank you, whoever did that. That must be Christy. <laughs> Yes, I think you have to put www too though, because I don't. I'm not sure that linked up. Um. So um. Yes. Yeah, so the shatteredcircle.com is where you can go and get all the information, and also you can join there. We are only going to be open until uh, Friday, and I want to tell you one more thing, and then we're going to finish this up because I know we've gone too long. Okay. Here is the deal. Thank you, Ag. So here's the deal. Uh, we have a year's worth of content in the Shattered Circle. Okay, so uh, almost over a year. So uh, next year we won't reopen again until March of 2020. And um, when we open again, you won't have a year's worth of videos. You won't have um, all that in the vault, okay? What you'll have is probably six months worth. You w and by the time it reopens again, there's gonna be like a year and a half. But um, you won't have that because it can start to get overwhelming for new members. So it will be the same price for the membership, but you'll have to move. Oh, is that what it is? How about that? <laughs> it was focusing on the balloon, wasn't it? Okay, so if you join, if you wait to join in March, you're not gonna get all of the tutorials. They're gonna be in a vault and you have to pay extra for them. So this is your last chance to get all the tutorials that we have done over the last year inside the Shattered Circle. Okay, so I'm gonna point that back down. Enough commercializing. Let's finish this piece of art, okay? But if you have questions, just let me know. Oh, I gotta flip. Hang on. Let's flip me. Flip me. Boom. Upside down. There we go. Carpe vino. So yeah, if you wait till March, you're not gonna get all the extras. So just saying. 
Okay, so I am going to first put my resin on my glass down here at the bottom, and I'm gonna use my popsicle stick and just drizzle over the top of my resin, okay? We wanna get all that resin covered, and the reason we drizzle is so that the resin goes from the top down. It, you hit the top, it runs down the top through to the canvas and kinda adheres everything together. It just makes everything one big happy family. So we're gonna do all of that. I'm gonna cover my little cork. Yes, Elizabeth, because if you wait till March, you, you'll have to pay extra for the vault. And that is really uh, so that people who come in, and I've actually already had an email or two from people who I feel like are already overwhelmed who have joined. And so we do not want you to feel that way. We don't want you to try to do all the things at once because there's a lot of goodness in there. So yeah, if you want all the vault, it, this is the time to join because you will have to pay extra for it in March. Not a whole lot, but uh, you know, probably a buck fifty-ish. And then the uh, regular monthly membership. So now that I have all my glass covered, I am just going to lay out some resin on my canvas and I'm going to rub my hands in it. We're going to finger paint. So I am going to just spread that resin with my hands. Okay, I'm trying not to get it running down the side. So we're going to spread that out. Spread, spread, spread. We're going to spread it all. <laughs> I'm just playing now. Just being silly. I better stop it. If I mess this up, I'll have to do another one. Uh, there is a t there's a button when you go when you uh, go live through the yellow flag app. There's a button that will flip it upside down. I'll have to go through that. Um, Joanne, I've already planned for November to have inside the shattered circle in November. We're gonna have um, a, a whole brand new how to create a Facebook page, how to do a live how to uh, apply for an art show. We're gonna go through that whole gamut again because it's that time of year. So we don't want anybody to miss out. We're gonna talk about pricing and we're gonna talk about um, all of those things. Yes, Diana, it is your, if you're in the shattered circle, it is your responsibility to download anything you want to keep forever. Okay, so, if, um, if you, all the videos are downloadable and all of the um, PDF documents, is, which is what you get, you get a PDF document and you get step-by-step uh, -step videos. And uh, it is your responsibility to download those if and when you decide to leave us. Because if you leave us, they go away for you. So if you don't download them, you're going to be sad. Okay, <laughs> how do you do that so the canvas doesn't show? Just use your hands. You, I do a very thin layer of resin because I don't like waste and I don't like, um, you know, just using so much resin that it's ridiculous. So I am chinchy and cheap and so I keep my resin to a minimum. So I just use my hands, spread it all out as best I can and I can see that it's all completely covered, and so then I'm done. So I put a little bit of resin on the inside of this bottle, guys, because I just want it to look like there's liquid inside, and I wanna make sure that these edges that were cut have good resin on them, okay? So I just put a dab of resin on the inside of the bottle. I'm gonna use my hands to spread it all out 
Then we're gonna place it right back onto our canvas. Now, not too much, Elizabeth, but you know what, here's the deal. If it does, I don't worry about it. As long as it's not terribly obvious and look bad, I don't worry. So yeah, I wouldn't worry about too much if you have a few little dots and spots that, um, no, Diana, if you're already in there, you have everything. You have access to everything you have access to now. They're not gonna go away for members who are already current. It'll only be new people coming in that won't have the vault. They'll have to pay to get it. Okay, so I've embedded my bottle back into my wet resin and I'm gonna take what's left of my resin and I'm gonna put it right down the middle of my bottle, okay? Right down the middle because what I want it to do is flow over the sides and roll down on each side. Now I'm not gonna go crazy because I don't wanna flood it. I don't want it to be so much resin that it's too much and it starts running off the edges of my canvas. So be very careful about that. So I'm gonna just spread it. I'm giving my little bottle a wine massage. Make sure my bottle is completely covered. Let it run down the sides to help adhere that right to your canvas. It's like, ooh, I need one of these. Somebody give me a massage? Yeah, okay, so I'm gonna take these gloves off. I see a few little something somethings in my resin. I'm not sure what that is. I'm gonna put, I did not put the blocks under and I have no spillage yet, but I'm gonna take my gloves off and do that right now. Cause I've just found a bug. <laughs> So I'm gonna take my gloves off very carefully. See, Joanne, I was talking so much, I didn't even pay attention. That happens sometimes to me. Yicky yak. Okay, so I'm gonna move this cup <laughs> and I'm gonna put my blocks under and the blocks are just scrap pieces of wood that keep, if I have resin run under over my edges and into my table, this will keep ugh, my elbow. This will keep it from gluing my canvas to my table. Yeah, I should have done that before. Okay, now I've got resin on my elbow. Hang on, gotta get that off. Oh! <laughs> No, you do not have to glue the bottle. Because I put resin on the, on the inside and it's gonna roll down the inside and I put it on the cut edges and then adhered it all together, it's gonna stick really nicely. I haven't done a bottle before, but I've done a glass and so I kinda know how it works, but it's gonna stick really, really nicely. So now what we have to do is resin. I really feel like Something is missing too though. It's like, I need to hit a spot there. Feels like something is missing. Like in this area. I need to think about this. Let me hit it with my torch real quick and then we'll think about if there's something else we need to do. So here is what we're gonna do next. Because we incorporate bubbles into the resin when we mix, we're gonna use our little blow torch to pop those bubbles. So what I'm gonna do is just light up my torch and you do not want the flame of the torch and you don't have to use this, okay? You can use a kitchen torch, you can use a heat gun, you can use whatever is most comfortable with you, but you are gonna need to pop those bubbles. So I'm gonna light this sucker up and two things to keep in mind. The flame from the torch never touches your canvas, okay? You're keeping the flame off your canvas at all times. And secondly, you're keeping your torch moving at all times, okay? You don't wanna stop and focus on one spot. You wanna keep that torch moving 
because if you focus on one spot, what's gonna happen is you're gonna burn that resin and in a few days, you're gonna have a big old yellow spot and then you're gonna be sad. You're gonna be sad, sad. Yeah, well, this is what the client ordered and whether I feel like it's uh, missing something or not, it probably is what it is. Cause, uh, what the client wants, the client gets, especially when she is a client who has bought 10 pieces of art from you. So I actually have a little bit of a drippy right here. I'm gonna just wipe off. I've just sprayed a little bit of alcohol on my cloth. I think I have. And I'm just gonna wipe that off because nothing else has a drip, and so I don't wanna have to do the whole side, okay? Yes, yeah, I just, there's just nothing else I can do to this one. If it was, if it was something I was just creating for fun, I would probably add something else to it, maybe bring some glass up or do something, but there is nothing else I can, yeah, a wine glass cut in half would be awesome. So we're just gonna leave it, and uh, hopefully she'll be a happy camper. She has not been unhappy yet. That is exactly right. <laughs>